the V6 powered Atlas we tested had adequate power, but there's no hot rod version like Ford offers with the EcoBoost V6 Explorer, and VW's 2.0 turbo is down quite a bit to the 280 horsepower and 310 pounds to foot from Ford's 2.3 liter EcoBoost 4. There's a sport mode for the transmission that holds gears longer when accelerating and forces downshifts earlier, but it's really not necessary. In standard mode, the gearbox is unobtrusive, shifting quickly and quietly enough that we could just forget about it. And we mean it as a compliment. The EPA rates the all-wheel drive Atlas at 17 city, 23 highway, and 19 combined. That's on the low side for the midsize crossover segment, and down 3 mpg combines to the Highlander. VW rates the Atlas to tow as much as 5,000 pounds, but only if you opt for the factory installed trailer hitch that's offered on V6 models. All other Atlas models can tow up to 2,000 pounds. That max rating matches the Explorer, Highlander, Traverse, and Honda Pilot. The only competitor that can tow more is the Dodge Durango, which has a rating of up to 7,400 pounds. Standard Atlas S models get LED lights front and rear, a 6.5-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, 18-inch aluminum wheels, and a rear-view camera. For about $3,000 more, the SE benefits from things like keyless entry, full leather seats that are heated in the front, and an 8-inch screen. The $36,615, or $39,815 with all-wheel drive, Atlas SE with technology package gets a raft of active safety equipment that includes adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning and autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian monitoring, and lane departure warning. We'd like to see most of that safety stuff come standard on a vehicle designed primarily to haul family and friends. If you can live without any fancy gizmos like the digital cockpit, real leather seats, and a 12-speaker Fender-branded sound system, the regular Atlas cell is fairly well equipped at $40,085 or $43,615 with the V6 engine and all-wheel drive. And finally, the top-grade cell premium that we tested rings the register at $49,415 and comes standard with the V6 engine and 4 motion. Some of the obvious cost-cutting you'll see and feel in an Atlas might be acceptable at the Q's starting price of $31,425. But once the trim level rises and buyers are expected to shell out just shy of $50,000, it suddenly feels objectionable. And that's the main issue we have with the Atlas. On paper, it's a contender with lots of space, an adequate powertrain, good driving dynamics, and a competitive price point. The problem is that the competition looks and feels a notch better, both inside and out, and there's no real gotta have it factor tipping the scales in favor of the Atlas. VW needed a credible entry into the seven passenger crossover segment, and now it has one. But the company didn't break any new ground in the process. We're sure the brand will sell a whole bunch of Atlases here in America, land of the free and home of buyers to base decisions on value by the pound. But we still wish the Americanization of VW's traditionally European tinged lineup aimed for a lot less bland and a little more premium.